وَمَلَّمْ يَسْتَطِعِ مِنْكُمْ طَوْلًا أَنْ يَنْكِحَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ مِنَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ As for those of you who don't have the capacity, cannot afford to marry free believing women. Free women, believing women. Mu'minat, muhsanat. If you can't marry them, because you have to pay the dowry. You are poor. You don't have anything. You might have seen in Saudi Arabia, people you know, they ask for charity because I have to pay the dowry. I want to, to get married. I don't have the money with me. So please help me so that I can have that amount with which I can go and marry. So that is also something, you know, for which people are begging in, in, that, in that country. So one lam yastatay min kum taulam. Whosoever amongst you doesn't have, can't afford, doesn't have the money. So that he can marry a young kihil muhsanatil muaminat, free believing women. So as a concession, you are allowed to marry the slave girls. Min fatayatikumul muaminat. But only the slaving girls who have become mu'mins, who have, who have accepted and embraced Islam. If a slave girl comes to you as a captive, she remains a mushrik or kafir, you can't marry her. Marriage will not be able, but you will not be permissible, but you can have relationship with her as a captive, but it will not be a marriage. She will not get the status of a wife. The status of a wife will be attainable only by a Muslim woman. Although she was a captive, she, was, she came as a slave girl, but she has embraced Islam. She is still a captive girl, but you can marry her. Wallahu alam imanikum. Allah knows very well about your iman, whether you have iman or not, whether she has iman or not. So what is to be decided is on the basis of Islam, not iman. Whether she is a Muslim or not, whether you are a Muslim or not. All the legal matters are based on Islam, not on Iman. Because Iman is something hidden in your hearts. Wallahu alam of Imanikum. Only Allah knows about Iman, whether you have Iman or not. Whether I have Iman or not. But I am a Muslim, you accept me as a Muslim. You are a Muslim, I accept you as a Muslim. Ba'alakum bin ba'alakum. You are from each other. After all, even if she is a slave girl, she is a human being. She is from the, from the progeny of Adam and Eve. Ba'alakum bin ba'alakum. So this is only a level, you know, in this society for arrangement, for management. But you know, all human beings are equal. So you can marry them, the slave girls, but with the permission of their masters. Maybe the slave girl belongs to me. And somebody, some Muslim, you know, a poor Muslim, he asked the permission from me. Can I marry your slave girl? And if I allow, then, the, then she will become the wife of that person. And now I will not have the right to have any sexual relationship with that slave girl. That is stopped now here. Because I permitted him to marry her. And them also, to them also you give their, their mahar. Bil maruf in a proper way. Bil maruf e muhsanatin ghaira musafihatin. You take these slave girls also to have the, the, in the fort of nikah, not only to have the sexual pleasure. And also not to have any hidden relationship, any hidden friendship. Now if they become, they come in nikah of a Muslim, of a Mormon, although they are slave girls, now they are the wives. For now, if they commit something indecent, some, some adultery, the punishment given to them will be half of the punishment for the free and free believing women. And this is the concession which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for those of you who fear that, that they, can, they may fall into some sin. If somebody is without marriage, maybe he can go astray. So he wants to marry, anyhow, but he doesn't afford, he can't afford to marry a free believing woman. So it's a concession that they can marry the slave girls, provided number one, they are Muslims. Number two, they, it is done with the permission of the masters. Now if they are your wives, you have to pay them the dowry. And now if they commit any 
any adultery or something of that type then the punishment which is to be given to them will be half of the punishment of those who are regular and who are free momin wives wa in tasbiru khairul lakum and if you can have patience if you can go without marriage without marrying a slave girl because you can't accept that level of morality from her the level of morality of free women belonging to respectable families is something else and the level of morality that you can expect from people from these slave girls who have been captives who have been you know having the uh, sexual relationship with their masters the, the level cannot be the same so to should try not to marry the slave girls but if you think that you can fall into some sin bigger sin you may go towards adultery or fornication then it is better this is the concession from allah subhanahu wa taala that at least you you marry a slave girl by in tasbiru khairan lakum and if you can have patience if you can hold yourself then it is better for you wallahu ghafurur rahim and allah is forgiving and merciful yuridu allah la yubayyana lakum now these two ayat are very important all these injunctions don't do this don't do this don't do this maybe if man feels when well, it's very burdensome so many commandments so many restrictions so many limitations why shouldn't there be free sex or group sex there should be everything you know if a man is thirsty he can take water from anywhere if you have you feel a sexual urge well satisfy it from somewhere why all these restrictions these are philosophies of the day people argue that way there are arguments in favor of that so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying yuridu allah li yubayyana lakum allah subhanahu wa taala intends to make everything clear to you to you wa yahdiyakum and he wants to lead to lead you to the path and to the ways of those sunan allazina min qablikum who were before you min as-siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin people on whom allah subhanahu wa taala bestowed his favors and his mercy allah wants you to take to their path to follow them this aya will come inshallah in this very surah wa may yut'i allah wa rasul fa ulaika ma allazina anama allah alayhim min an-nabiyyin wa as-siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa yurid allah li yubayyana lakum wa yahdiyakum sunan allazina min qablikum wa yatuba alaykum allah wants to turn to you in in compassion in mercy in love wallahu alimul hakim and allah is all knowing all wise wallah yurid an yatuba alaykum again allah intends to return to you with his mercy with his favors with his grace with his glory wa yurid allazina yattabi'una ash-shahwat and as for those who are following their passions their animal instincts their lusts and desires their id and libido wal ladina yattabi'una ash-shahwat wa yurid allazina yattabi'una ash-shahwat they want they intend that you should antamilu malan azima you should deviate from the right path a very great deviation people want to take you astray people want to lead you to wrong paths but allah subhanahu wa taala wants you to keep to the right path to follow the path of those allazina anama allah alayhim on whom allah bestowed glory and favors yuridu allah an yukhaffifa ankum and in the last allah subhanahu wa taala wants to make things to lighten your burdens make things easier for you don't think this sharia to be a burden this is not a burden this is to make life easier for you more comfortable for you with more peace of mind with more you know contentment all these things which are the most valuable things for this life on earth also allah subhanahu wa taala to bestow these things upon you yuridu allah an yukhaffifa ankum wa khuliqa al-insanu dha'ifa and allah very well knows that man has been created a weakling there are weaknesses in his personalities he has passions he has emotions he has desires he has lust he has the id or libido haunting him so all these things are there he has created you he knows the weak points in you and he wants to fortify those weak points so that you are not led astray بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم